Hello, my name is Joelle, and today I'll be taking you through a yoga practice. If yoga is new to you, don't worry, we'll be doing everything together really slowly and gently, and I'll offer up some modifications so that you can find what works best for you and your body. I encourage you in all of our practices to be mindful of your vascular access points, always make sure that they are safe, and also listen to your body. If at any point you start to feel dizzy or if something feels painful, then please stop and check with your doctor before continuing. You're always welcome at any point to take a rest for a few breaths and meet us later on in the practice. And if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. In this practice, we'll be staying standing on our feet the entire time. So this is going to be a wonderful practice for those days where you're feeling a little bit more energetic or where you simply don't want to get down on the floor or place any pressure on any particular areas of the body. I would encourage you to keep a stool or something sturdy nearby, or at the very least, maybe to come close to a wall. And that will help us with some of our more challenging balancing postures today. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'd like you to take the feet roughly underneath your hips, close together but not touching. Take a moment to maybe lift the toes or rock a little bit from side to side, just to settle into what feels like the center point of the body. And then once you've found it, we'll find our breath. So in yoga, we talk about the ujjayi breath, excuse me, we talk about the ujjayi breath, that sensation of slight constriction in the back of the throat that creates an audible sound as we breathe in and out through the nose. So the lips are softly together, the jaw is relaxed, we inhale through the nose. We exhale through the nose. And you might have noticed that sound almost like an ocean wave or maybe that sound you hear when you put a seashell to your ear at the beach. Let's take one more round of breath together here. and then we'll open the eyes. So this is where it might be nice to come towards our chair, our wall, our countertop, whatever you have nearby that's going to help with balance. And I'd like you to lift up the toes of the left foot and then place them down. See if you can spread the toes a little bit just to create that wider base. Really feeling all five toes of the left foot as well as the heel pressing firmly down into the earth. You could bring one hand onto your hip, the other holding, or not. Then we'll start to peel the right foot off the mat. So bit by bit, you can keep the tip of the toe on the ground if that's more comfortable, or maybe the knee starts to come in towards the chest. And inhaling here. Exhaling, start to extend that leg. So it doesn't need to go very far. Maybe again, you keep the toes on the ground and you just slide them forwards and back. Or maybe you find just a little bit of length through the back of the leg, maybe even flexing that foot. And then inhale, returning the knee up. And exhale, extend. Let's take two more wherever you're at. And exhale, straightening the leg. And then set it back down. Just notice whether you maybe start to tip over towards one side. One leg has worked a little bit differently now from the other. We'll balance that out, don't worry. So again, lifting up the toes of the right foot, planting them back down. Maybe a little bit of space between those toes if that's possible for today. Think about engaging through the abdominals, 
and we'll softly peel the left foot up. Maybe the knee comes in towards the chest. Maybe you notice that this is easier or more challenging on the second side. And with a deep inhale here, we'll then exhale to kick that foot forwards. And it doesn't have to come very high. You're probably already feeling the thigh work. I know I am as we inhale to lift and exhale to lengthen. And last one here, inhaling knee towards chest and exhale, finding a little bit more length in that leg. And then setting it down. Again, observe how you feel. Maybe close the eyes for just a moment. See if you feel perhaps a little bit more centered. You might still be shifting towards one side and that's fine. All of us have one leg that's a little bit longer, one hip that's a little bit more open. That's just the way we're built. So we're just learning some things about ourselves today. We'll take another balancing move before we move on. So I'd like you to stand again on your left foot, pick up the right. We've been here before and you might pull the knee in or you could even keep it out in front of you. And this time we're going to close the eyes and just see how that feels for balance. So you're absolutely welcome to keep one hand in the chair, or you might, just for fun, play around with placing that hand to your hip. And if you need to catch yourself, that's okay too. Observing all the little muscles in your left leg and foot, keeping you up. One more breath here. And then opening the eyes and setting the foot down. Very nicely done. And we'll see how we do second time around. Second time's the charm. Planting down through that right foot, lifting up through the left foot. Any shape that that left foot wants to take doesn't really matter. And once you are ready, closing the eyes. And again, the hand that is holding onto your object might just come to fingertips. Maybe even one fingertip is enough to stabilize. Or maybe that hand lifts off. Maybe it keeps touching down, making sure the chair is still there. One last inhale. And exhale to open the eyes and set that foot down. So take a moment to ask yourself, how was that for that? How was that for you, excuse me? Oftentimes we talk about the two most important parts of the body when it comes to balancing poses being the abs, which hold the entire body steady, the core, and the eyes. And we took away the sensation of our eyes, which made the balance a lot more challenging. Normally in balancing postures, we can fix one specific point and that helps us. But it's nice sometimes just to experiment a little bit with what the body is capable of doing when you shut down one of the senses. So nicely done on that. So let's come now to face the chair, holding onto it with both hands or against the wall if that's where you're practicing for tonight. Flex the right foot up and just start kicking it backwards. And think about squeezing through the glutes every time you press back here. Waking up a little bit through the back of the leg keeping the heart nicely lifted. And once we've done about 10 of those, we'll set that down and switch sides. So left foot flexes and starts to kick behind us, squeezing through the glutes with every kick. And this little activation exercise is going to help us with what comes next as we look for more stability in the lower body. So that's probably just about enough of that. And we'll come back to center here and find a warrior two position. So you might be familiar with warrior two where the feet are pretty far away from each other and we're making the front thigh parallel. And that might be appropriate for you if yoga is something that you do practice regularly. But for the rest of us, 
I'd like us to come into a shorter warrior two. So rather than having the thigh parallel, we're just having a very slight bend here in that uh, front knee, in the right knee in this case. And extending the arms out towards the side, think about tucking the tailbone under. Sometimes the booty likes to stick out. Take an inhale here. And then exhale, press that front foot into the ground to straighten through that front leg. And again, inhale, just that slight bend. And exhale, presses you back. So you might notice how those glutes that we just activated and the front of the thigh that we activated earlier are helping us stay upright. They're helping us do the work here. And we'll take one more and come to straighten up. Wonderful. Simply turn around. If you feel more comfortable, maybe shifting the chair around. If you would like to some, keep something just underneath your hand, you're welcome to do so. Otherwise, the right foot, the back foot, is perpendicular to the front foot, which is facing directly out from the hip. Again, we expand through the chest to reach the arms out in opposition. And on your exhale, bending through the knee ever so slightly, doesn't take much. And then inhale, press the heel down to straighten up. And a few more. So now that your body has already experimented with the first side, perhaps the second side is a little bit more accessible. Or it might take you a few times of repeating this exercise before the body really starts to get it, and that's okay too. Let's take one more. And then bring the arms back to the side. Close out that front foot. Start to wiggle your way back until the feet find the space underneath the hip points to step it out. No special way of doing this, just letting that go. And then finding stillness with the lower body eyes open or closed, maybe challenging your balance just that tiny bit more for today. And start to roll one shoulder back and then the other, almost like a swimming motion here. Just finding a little more activity in the upper body. Of course, always being mindful of your vascular arm or any other areas that need special attention. And we'll reverse that, simply swim the shoulders forwards now. Maybe this feels a little bit different. Maybe feeling this all the way through the back, maybe into the neck. And finishing up your last circle. Settling in, let's all close our eyes, bring the palms of the hands forwards. Reach for the ceiling with the crown of the head. Inhale through the nose. And exhale, sigh it out through the mouth. Final breath together, inhale, the biggest inhale you've taken all day. And exhale, let everything go. <sighs> Blink the eyes open, take a moment to smile. Thank yourself for turning up today and every day. I thank you for practicing with me today. I hope to do so again very soon.